get him a soldier's uniform and he can walk more or less freely as long as an officer doesn't see him. Get him an officer's uniform, he can tell a soldier to look in a different direction, making him easy to either neutralize or, you know, giving you opportunity to neutralize whoever he was looking at. And if you get him a general's uniform, you can tell a soldier, go over there, then you can follow him, tell him, now look that way. That makes for a lot of fun, much easier neutralizing, if you get the general's uniform. These games have an incredible attention to detail when it comes to weapons, buildings, vehicles, even to an extent the language is spoken. Very realistic, very authentic. To help give you some advantage over the to help give you some advantage over the enemy, you can check the view of any enemy soldier at any time. You can see how far they can see in this green cone, starting at their eyes and working its way out. And as it gets to a darker green, you can be crawling where they can see and they won't be able to tell that you're there. There's also a camera feature where you can have the camera follow any soldier if he's making patrols or such. And you can also split the screen. And you can also make split screens. I think it's at least half a dozen total. And each of those have individual camera options so you can have you know, one of them following a patrol, another one just staying still on a person. I think that's it for the overall, so now I'm going to get into Commandos number one, Behind Enemy Lines. This is the original, and probably one of the toughest, which is not at all to say that it's the least fun. The game keeps challenging you, and it's certainly never boring on account of not being hard enough. It can be a little straining if you're stuck in an area and you just cannot think of how to proceed. But the game makes up for it by every step you make towards completing a mission or even an objective is a small victory in and of itself. There are about 20 missions in total and all of them are difficult. The first one or two are a little short and you'll get through them fairly quickly but it gets to be rather big and challenging by the end. Also, the ending of the very last mission is, in my opinion, the single most cathartic moment of any mission of any real-time strategy game ever. I refuse to give away what it actually is, but if you're playing through and you're near the end of the last mission and you're saying, okay, this can't possibly be worth it, Trust me, it's worth it. Keep trying. Get past it. The ending is phenomenal. And somehow, without it feeling like it contradicts everything that came before it, I don't know how you did it, Pyro, but good job. And by Pyro, I do mean Pyro Studios, not the little purple dragon. Now, it is the first game, so obviously not everything's going to be perfectly worked out. And when compared to the second one, yes, it has a lot less features, but honestly, I personally did not play all of the first one until I had played all of the second one and all of the third one, mostly because it was a little harder to find than the third one, and I already had the second one. But I was really not disappointed, and I was honestly kind of thinking, oh boy, I'm going to be missing all those features. I really wasn't all that much. It's entertaining, it's challenging, it's satisfying. It's respectful of history and it's realistic. It takes you across many different locations. The graphics are arguably only good for the time, but they're not bad. The game's from 1998, and when I played it, it did admittedly kick me out on occasion because of memory issues. But if you're saving often, that's not a problem, and if you're playing this, you have to be saving often. But yeah, in closing, not only a completely new way of doing strategy, but also still one that's worth playing even if you have played the later ones. Moving on to the mission pack for the first one, Commandos Beyond the Call of Duty. There isn't an awful lot to say about this because it's the same engine. Basically what it is, is eight new missions, all of them really tough, and there are a couple of new features. 
like I already said before, I think this is the first time the driver has weapons beyond just the pistol. Apart from that, you get to throw rocks, which you can either throw near a soldier and he'll like hear it and turn around a little bit. I think you can also throw it at them, though I don't quite remember if that like makes them freak out and raise the alarm. It's been a while since I played this. I'm not sure this is actually the first time we see the cigarette packs that you can throw and then and then we will go and pick them up and you know you can either take him out as he's going over to it right after he spotted it whatever I'm not certain this is the first time you see them but it might be a little more smooth than it was in the original it's still not quite the way it is in the second one yeah I think that's about what there is to say about the mission pack still immensely challenging. If you enjoyed the first one, you're gonna enjoy the mission pack as well. It's only got half as many missions as the original, and it'll still last you a pretty decent time. I played this years before I played the full version of the first one, but even thinking back to it, I don't think it's too little. Every mission is new and unique. Nothing feels like it's a rehash of the mission of the first. And that brings us to Commandos 2, Men of Courage. The Green Beret is looking very angry there, and one reviewer pointed out that maybe it's because he didn't get to kill as many this time as he'd like to. Which I can kind of see, because in this one, in addition to the ratings you got before, you'll be rated on how many you left alive that you neutralized. This time it'll pay off more to knock them out and tie them up the graphics get a huge upgrade. Now, when you're making noise, there'll be these waves emitting from the place that the noise is coming from, whether you're using the decoy or running, and you can get a basic idea of how far away you can be heard. In this one, you get a full-on limited RPG-style inventory with you know boxes, and you can see how much you can carry. And this actually means that you can have someone carrying equipment for one of the other commandos if that other commando has to be carrying, you know, a ton of stuff. For And in fact, there are a ton of things in this game that you can pick up and carry around and use here and there. For example, if you pick up ten bed sheets, you can, you know, tie them together and, yeah, you know, the old prison thing. And if you're on top of a building, you can use it to get down to the bottom of it without having to walk through it and such. And for that you can also find rope ladders, so you can essentially climb up a building and then throw down a rope ladder and have the other commandos follow without ever walking through the building. This gives the player a lot of freedom, and I almost have to say that it's too much, because it doesn't really feel like you're fighting a losing battle anymore. It doesn't feel like the odds are stacked against you. I mean, in this one, you can even get a flamethrower and a bazooka for the sapper, and, you know blow stuff up and torch enemy soldiers. And while the bazooka certainly comes in handy here and there, it almost feels like they're leaning a little bit too much towards, you know, action. And that brings me to an aspect that I also brought up in the Hitman episode, namely the issue of sequels to really tough, challenging games being much easier. The original and mission pack are definitely tough, and I guess they felt that they had to make it a little bit easier. Now I will say they got away with it much more than the Hitman franchise because this is still challenging and it is still fun and you still want to solve things the right way. And this also gives you nice and varied difficulty settings where in the first one it was basically okay how tough do you want it to be not you know okay do you want it tough or do you want it a little more lenient. In this one it is okay you want it lenient or do you want it full-on tough, closer to how it was in the first Nintendo's mission pack. The interface has changed some. You can now activate things easier, like holding shift will activate a function that makes sense for that. If, for example, you're holding the cursor over a soldier that's dead or unconscious and tied up, and you hold down shift and that commando can carry him, the icon for carrying him will come up, and you just press it and he'll go and pick him up or if he's just been knocked out and that commando can tie him up, the icon for tying up comes up. 